Kia ora tata. Kia ora. Kia ora I'm going to talk to you today about a journey of joy. Some people have accused me of having the best job on the planet, and I willingly accept that mantle. In the spirit of Sir Edmund Hillary, who this year, had he been with us, would have been a hundred. My job is to search the planet for exceptional human beings who are demonstrating incredible leadership in mid-career. And it's a great privilege. It's a deep privilege. And normally at this time of the year, I'm rushing to complete for the board internationally a short list of six characters who I've secret squirreledly looked at around the planet over the previous months as the last six who the board will say, we choose from these six the one who will this year be the Hillary Laureate globally. But this year there is no laureate. Instead, in honouring Sir Ed's 100-year anniversary, we're bringing them together for the first time. So the privileged journey that I've been able to take with my colleagues over the last 15 years has resulted in nine Hillary Laureates. They are an incredible group of individuals, some of whom are well known to this wonderful community here today. And for those of you who have been a part of our extended family, the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, and these festivals. So most recently, of course, Johan Rockström, perhaps the world's most preeminent climate scientist, and last year, Megan Falone, the founder of Barefoot College, working with women's health and education across 97 countries. So instead, this year, we are bringing them all together, and we hoped we could do that here in Aotearoa. The reality is these folks are so... Uh, passionately involved with the journeys that they're on, that they said, look, find somewhere halfway. So the halfway turned out to be Sun Valley, Idaho. <laughs> you may ask why. Well, one of them is a remarkable character, Amy Christensen, the founder of the Christensen Fund, a remarkable Beltway girl in the US, um, and her dad died a couple of years ago, and she went home from Washington to Look after the far now, Sun Valley, Idaho. But Amy being Amy, of course, she wasn't just going home to look after the far now. She decided that Sun Valley, Idaho would become a foundation of a journey of joy in her terms, called the Sun Valley Institute. And every year they hold a gathering uh, right across the Americas uh, for people to come together and talk about resilience and the climate challenge we all confront. So, we're front-ending it. We're bringing the laureates together for a couple of days before, and we're going to go into lockdown and do two things. And then the festival will follow on. The two things we're going to do are very simple. Uh, basically, each one of us is going to come, each one of the laureates is going to come, and we, in supporting the Kopapa as the Hillary Institute, and indeed the Edmund Hillary Fellowship, will be there as well, to assist them to answer two questions. What in this last decade has been the single most powerful and impactful intervention that they feel they have made? So whether we're talking about Johan, whether we're talking about Megan, whether we're talking about Mike Brune, who's the head of Sierra Club, whether we're talking about our Tuakana in Kiribati, President of Naughty Tong, these nine laureates are coming with one piece of preparation, what, what is that intervention that resonated most strongly and most powerfully in your journey in the last decade? However, we are then mindful of the extraordinary challenge that we all confront around some of the deepest issues of our time. We are then going to collectively figure out a roadmap, a journey of joy, if you will, around something which we are going to do, which is construct the future we want. So my invitation to you all is to help us as we head towards July this year to think about the future we want. What does it look like? 
What does it feel like? What profound response to the challenges, existential challenges we confront internationally do we have to consider? What is the hard mahi, the conversations that matter, one of which, as Mike alluded to, we had here yesterday, that are essential to ensure that we don't stay within our particular echo chambers, that we don't do the safe thing of just having conversations with those who agree with us. But we bring everyone together around this kopapa, and we celebrate the creation of a roadmap of a how to get there for the future we want. Over what time frame, you may ask? The scientists are telling us the urgency is fundamentally now 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12 years minus tipping points before all bets may well be off. The laureate's response, let's get on the front foot. Let's be a part of constructing a roadmap which spawns projects all over the world which are part of the future we want. So again, thank you for being here. Sitting behind me is the ghost of Sir Ed, and I feel sure he'd be absolutely delighted to be with us in this journey. Can I totuku again, the cohorts in the room, the fellows in the room, your journeys never cease to inspire us, never cease to inspire our laureates. We're inviting you to work with us on this kopapa in this 100-year celebration of Sir Edmund Hillary's birth. Gyaratata <laughs> Kato. Thank <laughs> you.